Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John Hill Church. My name is Dave Bittler. I am the pastor here. If you're visiting with us this morning, we wish you a special welcome and thank you for worshiping with us today. Uh, lots of announcements. Uh, specifically, I want to bring your attention to this Saturday at 3 o'clock. Uh, my good friend Keith Plott will be here. He was the one that you just heard singing as I came in. Uh, Keith is coming to us from the great state of South Carolina and is currently touring up this way and will be here at 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. This Saturday we're going to have uh, some light refreshments afterwards. If you'd like to help with that, there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex and we would appreciate your help uh, with that. But invite your friends. If you have friends who enjoy southern gospel music, then uh, Keith is going to be right up your alley. Uh, that's 3 o'clock next Saturday afternoon, October the 15th. Uh, on Saturday, October 29th, uh, we're going to be having a, a family fun day uh, at the Wilcox Farm Corn Maze. Uh, if you don't know where that is, let me know and we'll get you um, directions to that. But that also is going to start at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the church will cover uh, your admission to the corn maze. Uh, anything after that is up to you. If you need concessions or souvenirs or anything like that, that's, uh, that'll be for you. But we will cover uh, your admission to uh, the corn maze, and we look forward to having a lot of fun. If the weather is uh, not good that day, we will meet here at the church instead for a, uh, a game night. Um, but uh, we're praying that the, the weather will hold out uh, for, for that. Uh, are there other announcements? I know the uh, turkey supper is coming up and uh, we need lots of volunteers for that. Uh, so um, if you can help with that, uh, let us know and we'll make sure you get plugged into that as well. Uh, that we have uh, rehearsals starting for the Christmas cantata, and I'm looking for volunteers to help sing. Uh, we will start rehearsing this Wednesday at 7.30. All right, so volunteers, if you want, like to sing in the Christmas cantata this year, yes, we're talking about Christmas uh, already, but uh, time to get practicing for that. Uh, practice is starting this Wednesday at 7.30. Yes. Yeah, the consistory uh, was scheduled to meet today, but we're not going to meet uh, today after church. We're going to meet next Sunday after church. So if you're on consistory, um, please join us next Sunday after church for that. Any other announcements this morning? All right. Well, let's uh, take a few moments to prepare our hearts for worship as we hear the prelude.
Would you stand for our call to worship, which comes from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Would you join me as we sing our opening hymn, We Praise Thee, O God. It's number two in your hymnal, and the wall, words will be on the wall behind me. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to give you praise this morning for what you have done for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, as we sing of your wondrous works, as we read of your word to us, Father, would your spirit be among us? Would you guide us and direct us into your truth that we may know you better and to serve you as we should? We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to a time of confession of sin, I'd ask that you take your bulletin or follow on the wall behind me as we pray together the prayer of confession that is found there. We'll pray that together in unison. Following that, we'll take a few moments in silent confession to confess our own personal sins to the Lord. 
After that, I'll close this in prayer and offer us some words of assurance. So would you join me as we pray the prayer of confession in unison. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Let's take a few moments in silent confession this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you with repentant hearts to confess our sins before you, acknowledging our need of your grace. Father, would you hear our prayers, hear the cry of our hearts, forgive us, cleanse us, and make us new. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from Hebrews chapter 2. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Let's sing together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. time, let's continue our worship as we take up our morning's tithes and offerings. I'll ask our ushers to please come forward.
stand and return thanks. Father, we come before you this morning with thankness and joy in our hearts. Father, would you accept these gifts from our hands, an offering to you, in gratitude for all that you have given to us. Father, bless each gift and bless each giver. To the work of your kingdom, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask that you remain standing as we sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 5? Hopefully your Bibles are getting worn out. Between Matthew chapter 5 and Exodus chapter 20, you should have two good grooves in your Bible now. We'll be focusing in on verse 8 today, but we're going to read verses 1 through 12 again to keep the context in front of us. Let's hear the word of God. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us. Father, would you come now by your Spirit to expound your word, to help us to see you more clearly, to know you, and to serve you as we should. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes Jesus says things that scare me. This is one of those. Blessed are the pure in heart. Anybody feeling really good about this one this morning? I mean, anybody care if we, if we take a giant spotlight and shine it on your heart looking for purity? I mean, you remember the old, was it the old ivory commercials? 99.44 percent pure. Made you wonder what that other half a percent was. But even ivory soap couldn't say that it was pure. It was close, but it wasn't quite there. Well, what does it mean to be pure in heart? Well, to be pure means to be without defilement. In Jesus' day and you know, prior to, metallurgy was a very important field, and it was one that uh, most people understood probably a lot more than we do today. And to make metal pure, you ex generally expose it to great heat. Because in that great heat... The impurities, the things that are not metal, will rise to the top so that they can be brushed away, leaving nothing but the pure metal behind. And of course, you know, you know if you go to buy you know, wedding bands, you know, we know that 24 karat gold is the the premium standard to be that which is pure gold. You can get lesser grades that have, you know, some impurities still in them, um, but the 24 karat gold is considered to be the pure gold. When Jesus is speaking about being pure in heart, He's not talking about the muscle that pumps blood through your body. You know, he's not saying, well, if you 
if you've got heart disease, you know, you're not eligible to see God. It's not that kind of purity. Pure in heart is speaking about that central part of us that makes decisions, that, that governs our emotions, guides our steps. Purity in heart not only means that which is without defilement, you know, having moral purity, you know, not engaging in blatant sin, but it also has a second meaning, which is just as important. And it, it talks about being pure in heart has a simplicity to it. That you are of a single mind, not a, what we would call a double-minded person. Jesus talks about this later on. He says, you can't serve God and money. You can't serve two masters. Either you will love the one and hate the other, or you will hate the first and love the second. You can't have it both ways. You know, we used to describe you know, folks like that you know, as, as, as a mugwump. You guys know what that is? Now, a mugwump is a person who's got his mug on one side of the fence and his wump on the other. Think about it for a minute and you're okay. You know, hasn't committed to either side. Right? He's double-minded. He's not fully committed, trying to play it both ways. The best way that I can explain this to you is not my explanation at all. So I'm going to allow uh, another author uh, to explain this. This is one of my favorite little parables uh, that he came up with. It's not him reading it. I'm not sure who the person is uh, telling this story. Um, but I think it will get the point across. It uh, was actually written by a pastor named Max Lucado down in Texas. And it's a little story called The Yay Yuck man. Being of single mind. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart. Those who are focused on God and what he desires. Which is what Jesus personified in his character day in and day out. He came and he said, I am here to do the will of my Father. He comes, as it were, into a land of coats with no coat. The Pharisee said, you, you don't fit our style. You're not like us. Even the disciples, even Peter would look at him at sometimes and say, Jesus, you're not doing this right. You're supposed to help us overthrow the Romans. And Jesus says, I'm not putting on a coat for you. Jesus says to the Pharisees, I'm not going to put on a coat for you. He says, I'm going to become and come and be committed to the truth that God has sent me to speak. Blessed are the pure in heart. Jesus knew what he was saying to his disciples. This isn't easy. Because Jesus was pure in heart, they killed him for it.
what Jesus is asking is no small ask. It's not just about moral purity, but it's about being singly focused on God. You can't serve God and money. You can't serve God and anything else. Jesus is calling his disciples to be focused, to be laser-sighted on the target of being like God. Because the second half tells us exactly what that gets us. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You think back into the, the story of, of Moses. We didn't quite get to this uh, part, I don't think. But when Moses is up talking to God, and he says, God, I, wa I want to see you in your glory. <laughs> God, God, you can almost hear him chuckle, say, dude, you can't handle seeing me in my glory. It will burn you up. He says, look, go stand in the cleft of this rock, and I will let my glory pass by. And he says, I will, I will remove my hand, my covering, so that you can see the back end of my glory. And so he does, and Moses is allowed to see just the, just the, the tail end of God's glory, and it makes his face shine so much that when he comes down off the mountain, all the people look at him and say, Moses, put a veil over your face because we cannot bear to look at you. That's just being exposed to the literally the backside of God's glory. But all throughout the Psalms, the psalmist was like, God, I want to see you. I want to know you as you are. It was the desire of the covenant people to be near God. That's why they would go to the temple, because that's where the presence of God resided. So they would go to the temple to worship, because that's where God was. Their desire was to see God. If you Flip your Bibles over to John chapter 14. In verse 6, Jesus says to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have also known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And then Philip says to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is enough for us. We want to see God. And what does Jesus say? Have I been with you so long and you still don't know me? Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Jesus is saying this is what purity is. And heart looks like. And if you, if you, if you understand that single-mindedness, that purity in heart, you will have seen me. You will have seen the Father. In John's first letter, the letter of First John, chapter three, John is marveling at this fact. He says, see what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. He wasn't wearing the right coat. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears... We shall be like him because we shall see him as 
he is. In all of the marveling that John does about being loved enough by God to be one of the children of God, he says, but in the end, we know that we shall see him as he is. That was the, the burning, longing desire of his heart to see God. So the question for us becomes, what is that burning desire that we truly long for? Again, if we could put the spotlight into your heart, what would it show as that burning, longing desire? Is it the desire to know and to serve God? Or is it to serve something else? Because John Calvin noted a long time ago that that the human heart is nothing but an idle factory. Seek out things to serve. On a superficial level, it could be a sports team, a celebrity, a musician, where we will follow their career, and boy, if they're coming to town, we want to be there. God's in town all the time. He's always here on Sunday morning, and we don't even sell tickets because he doesn't need the money. What is our singular focus? Because Jesus said, you're going to serve something. That's just the way our hearts are designed. It's designed to serve. It's designed to worship. And if we don't worship God, we're going to replace it with something else. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart. Those who are focused in on seeing God, they will see him as He is because they are focused, they are single-minded, simple. Doing it's not simple, but the idea is simple, that we're focused on one thing. And we don't have to worry about what color coat we're wearing to please this group or that group or this person or that person. Jesus said, you see how the world has treated me. He said, if you were doing what I'm doing, they're not going to understand either. The world is not going to like it when Jesus comes to town. They killed him then. If he were in town today, they'd kill him today because he won't fit the mold that we want to put him in. He has his own mold, and it's the mold of the Father. And we're called to emulate his focus on who God is in doing what he commands. Regardless of the cost, regardless of the worldly pressures to do otherwise, we're called to choose and to choose being pure in heart because that is where true blessedness comes from, and that is how we will get to see God. In response to God's word, let's affirm our faith together as we recite the Apostles' Creed. It's found in your bulletin and also on the wall behind me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
we come before the Lord in a time of prayer this morning, are there notes of praise or concern that we can bring before the family today? All right. Well, let's take these and any unspoken requests that we have before the Lord this morning in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for his example and what it means to be pure in heart. And Father, while we know that that is a, a tough call for us, something that seems very difficult, Lord, would you help us by your Spirit to remain focused on you, to choose to follow you in everything that we do. Forgive us when we fail. Restore us by your grace. And continue to lead us by your Spirit. Father, as we pursue you, would you also hear the cries of our hearts For the dear ones that we, we love who are struggling and suffering. For those who are in the midst of transitions. For those who are struggling with difficult decisions. Father, would you give them all clear guidance, and most of all, a sense of your, your peace and your presence with them. Father, for the unspoken requests that may remain heavy on our hearts, Lord, would you lift those burdens as we lay them at your feet, knowing that you care for us and that you invite us to cast them before you. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Go with us now as we seek to live for you. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught his disciples and so us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand for our closing hymn, Be Still My Soul. It's number 689 in your hymnal. The words will be on the wall.
I forget the last line. So. <laughs> May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.